Father, I desire from you just a word for your people today. Oluwa gbolohun oro kan mo fe latodo yin si awon eni oyin lone speak that word even now e so oro na ni sinsin yi jesus name i pray ni oruko jesu mo gbadura let's go to first peter chapter 3 e je ka lo si iwe peteru kini ori keta first peter chapter 3 iwe peteru kini ori keta and then i will read some few verses there. Maka awon ese kon nibe fun wa. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands, Be that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Why they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adoling let it not be that outward adoling of plating the air and of wearing of gold of putting on of apparel but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which is in the sight of God of great price for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adored themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands even as Sarah who bade Abraham calling him Lord whose daughters are ye as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and uh, has been ears together of the grace of God that your prayers be not hindered again we are seeing the principles of marriage in this text Apostle Peter one of the foremost of the apostles the Lord instructed him to pen down what we are studying today he himself being an excellent husband and he knew what it means to have a wife at home and he began to teach us in this text the wives the sub being subjection to your own husband in everything and when the people behold your subjection to your husband they begin to love the Lord you are serving when they look at your chest conversation coupled with reference and humility they will fear the Lord and they will want to be like you and Apostle Peter was saying unto the people in the ancient gone by and even to us today as the new age in the Lord that as women that it isn't the outward adornment that makes you an housewife indeed and unfortunately this has been the sole concentration of so many women today. Say, I must appear beautiful. I must appear very well. Because you dress the way you like to be addressed. I don't want anybody to snub me. I want to walk past people and then they will be compelled to look at me twice. And that's why I want to add some path on my I want to dress gorgeously. I don't want to wear anything very common. I want to put on imported dresses. When they look at me, they will know that the wife of so and so is passing. But the Bible says we must dress well or we mustn't be extravagant in our dressing. And we must not dress 
as hallowed. We must not dress like enemies of the gospel. Our dressing must not be worldly. Our dressing should bring glory and adoration to God. Not just in the plating of air alone and of wearing of gold. But the Bible says in the hidden man of our heart which is the, the, the mind of simplicity, the mind of humility, and the mind of subjection. That can never be corruptible. That is the ornament of a quiet and mixed spirit. And the Bible says, in the sight of God is of a great price. And it said the women in the olden days who are good housewives who knew what they were doing and what God expected from them to be fulfilled as as wives. The Bible says they were holy trustworthy dependable and they use the gift of the sorry the fruit of the spirit to adore themselves love joy peace long suffering endurance and the lives those things were found in their lives and the bible says above all they submitted themselves unto their husbands and then the scripture decided to pick a woman amongst those olden days women Sarah in particular the bible says Sarah was so subdued Objected to her husband so much so that she began to call her husband my lord. And the Bible says, those of us who are born again at this age, as daughters of Zion, who have the assurance of salvation in their hearts, and that their names are written down in the book of life. The Bible says, you are daughters of Sarah. Sarah. You are daughters of Sarah. Therefore, you must copy her attitude. Copy her spirit. Copy her devotion. Copy her subjection. Copy her whole a, a, a heart of love for a husband. And when you do that, nothing will make you to be afraid unnecessarily. And then the Bible went ahead to address men that if you are married, you are a man, a man indeed, and to whom much is given, much is expected. It said, likewise, ye husbands. What does that word likewise? What does it mean? Killing two more. It then means that certain things had been said before now. And those things that were said before now has nothing to do with men. But in order not for the men to remain in isolation of this dogma and understanding. Just as you had me talking to women, said, likewise ye also should not be left unspoken to. And he said, dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife. If you are married in the house this morning, and you form the habit of not giving honor to your wife, then you are not a worthy husband. And you are not fulfilling the scriptures. The Bible says you must honor your wife. It's a commandment. It's an instruction that you must obey. Honor your wife in everything, everywhere, with no, with, with no 
attachment of any condition. Your wife deserves honor. Honor at all times. Honor everywhere. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. The Bible says that women are like unto the weaker vessel. You know what it means. I'm going to shock you because I I really want to explain that word to you. This phrase is not telling us that women are inferior to men. This does not connote that women are of second class citizens. There is virtually anything a man can do that a woman cannot do. And the decision of a woman is usually stronger than that of a man. The weaker vessel, the Bible refers to in this portion. It means that when it comes to fighting, when it comes to beating, when it comes to strength and might exhibition, that women cannot be compared with men. That you treat your wife in that regard that she's a weaker vessel, therefore she should not be beaten. She should not be molested. And she should should not be abandoned. Virtually every part of a woman appears so succulent. Succulent. Oro. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Very succulent. Oro. Very soft. Oro. Of virtually every part of their body. Somebody said, Pastor, how do you know? I am married. So, and I touch women. I touch my wife. I know her body is soft. So where do you want to beat in that body? That soft body. That looks like a pub. What do you want to beat in that body? That's what the Bible is saying here. That when it comes to might and strength exhibition, a woman cannot fight like a man. That remember that she's not as strong as you are. And you are never permitted to beat your wife. If you are a wife beater, you don't know God. Oh, my Lord. You are not serving God. Oh, see your Lord. And you cannot make heaven. Ben, you lay the oro. If you are a wife bitter, to ba je ni to lu yawo. You are not qualified to have a, a wife in your home. Oh, ye lati ni yawo ni le. You are a bad omen in the society. A pere buburu lo je ni awo jo. If you are a wife bitter, to ba je ni to lu yawo. A psychiatric hospital should be recommended for you. Because certain things are wrong within the confines of your medulla oblongata. That must be corrected in no time. Before you become a public omen, a public plague, and a public disease. The Bible says, relate with your wife in honor preferring your wife to any other women so that your prayers will not be hindered if you are unfaithful to your wife you are having concubines or girlfriends as well you don't know God regardless of the name you are called and regardless of the position you occupy in the church it is still one wife one husband 
There should be no premarital sex and there should be no extramarital sex. Everything about you must be holy. Your wife should be able to trust you. Your husband should be able to trust you. And you are to live together in the fear of God. It is my prayer that what Peter wrote down here for you and I will be fulfilled in our homes in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm talking on couples beware. Couples beware. Yes, praise God. Couples beware. 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 I am particularizing it. I am emphasizing it. You've got to be very careful. If you are not careful, you are going to scatter your home. You are going to destroy your job. You are going to send your laughter away. Your fulfillment will travel to an unknown destination. Husband and wife. Beware. Beware. Because time waits for no man. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 3 from uh, verse 8 he said finally finally be ye all of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren be pitiful be courteous not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing but contrary wise blessing knowing that ye are there unto God that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lips that he speak no God let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Why? For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And uh, who is he that will harm you? If ye be followers of that which is good. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake. Happy are ye. And be not afraid of their terror nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evil doers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, accuse good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so. Be if you are not bad, that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. For Christ also has once suffered for sins. The just for the unjust. That he might bring us to God. Being put 
to death in the flesh but quickened by the spirit by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water the like figure we are on to even baptism also baptism doth also now save us not the putting away of the field of the flesh but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God angels and authorities and powers be made subject unto him give me a good amen <laughs> Couples beware. The message is an advice. This message is an advice. As well as a commandment to the newly wedded couples and older people in marriage that utmost care or caution must be given the serious attention in order to condone off their own front the family destroyers and satanic agents we are living at a time when virtually everything seems to be working against the Christian homes Satan and his cohorts are dangerously living and locking in a corner waiting to scatter careless Christian homes and this is the time in which history is not you know, too friendly with many of us as husband and wife we need to be very careful as people of God because the days in which we are is a day of terror and it's a day of disappointment that the devil is willing to scatter the Christian homes. Cohorts are here and there and the devil himself is massaging his ego and his spirit against the Christian home. The Christian home must be very careful because in the days in which we are, the devil is after them. This message before us, as I said, is an advice as well as a commandment that the newly wedded couple and the older people in marriage must be very careful that utmost care and caution must be given a serious attention to condone of home breakers, family destroyers, and satanic agents. We are living at a time when virtually everything seems to be working against the Christian homes, and Satan with all his cohorts are dangerously knocking in a corner, waiting to scatter careless Christian homes. This time in the history of mankind is deeply regarded as the last days in the divine calendar. Nations are rising up against nations, communal clashes here and there, uprising in killing, divorce and remarriage, wearisome diseases, people wearing angry look almost everywhere, fear and pandemonium. And all over the world, scary situations, disturbing stories, and of course, fracas and mayhems, vampires and ritualism here and there, blood money, social vices, high tempo of madras for money, classical atrocities in high places, irreverent abuse of God, taking God for granted, bad example, bad example, bad example exhibition from many leaders and people in high authority on righteousness and nonchalancy and etc etc all these and many more vices are areas of major concern which couples ought to guard against at this end time and I tell you people of God as a preacher have just discovered that nothing is too minute for Satan as an agent of destruction in every home if we are careless as married couples. Listen to me. As people of God, we must be very careful and take a cognizance of certain pebbles and potholes so that we will not develop flat tires in our marital journey. Couples, beware. Beware of cheats. Beware of deceivers. Beware of psychophants. Beware of bad churches. Beware of pastors who are ex 
excellent home breakers. Beware of fashion. Beware of negative influence. Beware of anything in vogue. Beware of rat race after money. Beware of wastages and getting too many things done all at the same time. Couples should concentrate on how God feeds per time over their homes and how far they have gone in the journey of their marital fulfillment, how to improve one another, and of course, becoming compatible day by day. Much is actually required from each couple as worthy contribution to their church, to their world, to their community, to their friends, and to the onlookers. To this end, I stand to say that God will bring you to book on the final day as couples with regard to these things. Therefore, you cleave unto your spouse and be ready to build your marital fulfillment together. You have wasted much of your time, much of your resources, and much of your challenges in time past. And of course, God is telling you now that if you are willing and you are ready to forgive your ignorance and come back to the Lord, he gives you a second chance and you become an excellent couple in no time. We need to know as people of God that God is expecting much from us and that was why Apostle Peter took time to explain to us that we need to love ourselves. If we love life and to see many good days in life, we must know why we are there. We reframe ourselves our tongue from evil and our leaves that we speak no God and that we eschew evil and do good and we seek peace and ensure it. We pursue it. We run after it. We buy peace. We buy the truth because we need those virtues in our homes. And the Bible says the eye of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. If you do evil against your spouse, the face of God is against you. Beware. Beware of how you relate with your spouse. People may not be able to bring you to book. On the final day, God is going to bring you to book and is sending me to you today that you should do something about it before it begins to spell your doom. Wives, you submit yourself to your husband. Husband, you reference your wife. You honor your wife, not because she's doing this and she's doing that. You just know it's a commandment from the Lord and you are doing it as it has been given unto you. Otherwise, your prayer will be hindered because the same grace that saved you is also the same grace that saved your wife. You shouldn't just look so superior upon your wife and thereby castigating and relegating her to background. You should honor your wife, exhorting your wife and give her a place in your heart and even in the family to express ourselves as well because both of you came together to form that particular family and finally the Bible says we should be of one mind having compassion one of another love as brethren be pitiful and be courteous. Listen to me. You have wasted much of your time, much of your resources and chances in time past. But now, the Lord is willing to forgive your ignorance if you are obedient and willing yourself. Do not apportion any blame at this juncture, but rather let the past be past indeed and start a new life altogether in Jesus with your spouse. The gap, listen to this, the gap you keep in between each other will not help your union. That gap is a case. It will certainly worry your union and also misdirect your path. God is still interested in your union. Circumstances surrounding your union notwithstanding, he holds the master key in his hand. Allow this same God to open every door and of course doors leading to your peace, to your provision and productivity which you have ignorantly shot against yourself in time past. Forgive each other wholeheartedly. Remember how you started together and how far you have come in the journey of marital fulfillment. The assignment before your home, your dream, your passion, your focus, your objective and things preconceived for God before wedding. I feel like reminding you those things you have preconceived in your heart before you got to know that man who is your husband today. Before you got to know that lady who is your wife today. What are your passion? What are the things you have in mind? Passion for the kingdom of God. Passion for evangelism. Passion for revival and spiritual reawakening. Where are those things now? That's what God is sending me to remind you 
up in times like this. Your passion for Christ. Your passion for your home. Your focus, your objective. And things preconceived for God before wedding. Those things must not be allowed to die just like that. Those things are gradually crying for expression anew. Give them the second thought. Because you are a blessing to this generation. You are a champion. You are a frontliner. You are a leader. You are an authority. You are a channel. A channel of blessing. You are a reference point, And you are the joy of many generations. I want to challenge you that you should dare to bring your spouse closer again. Discuss deeply together. Talk out your mind freely in the respect of of your family look straight to each other's eyeballs and bring to mind the sweet memories and heart seated promises of those days determined to send the devil away from your life from your mind and from your home by the very special grace of god i see ahead of you a new life as a couple in the name of jesus christ Couples, beware. Beware of false prophets. Beware of bad churches. Beware of evil prophecies. Beware of bad influence. Beware of anger and provocation. Beware of foul languages. Beware of satanic counselors. Beware of spiritual fungi diseases. Beware of suspicion and pride. Beware of wicked friends. Beware of psychophants. Beware of joy suspenders. Beware of unscriptural decisions. All these things put together has a unique way of scattering the home if we allow them to take root in our homes. And that's why God is sending this message to you today. Beware of false prophets. They are everywhere now. There are prophets today and church leaders who will say, if you touch your wife between now and in three months' time, you will go mad. It's unscriptural. It's not of God. They say your wife is a witch. When the wife is not a witch, it's unscriptural, it's not of God. And that reminds me of a particular man who got married when he had nothing. And after his marriage, I think five years after his marriage, God began to bless him via his wife. And then his pastor called him and said, now you are a dealer. You are dealing with cars. And people are beginning to know you. Your wife is a witch. I just wanted to tell you so that you will know to send her away and marry another wife. The man said, I want to thank God. My wife is a witch. I love, I love her witches. You know what? When I got married to her, I had nothing. When she came to my house, I began to have. I want her to be using that uh, you know, witches to help me the more. Sir, you can send your wife away. I will never send my wife away. My wife is with me and we are standing together by the very special grace of God. And he got home and told his wife, I don't want you to look at that in our pastor. A pastor told me that you are a witch. You are not a witch. We are not going to leave that church. We will prove to him that we know what we are doing. If he has any wife to give to me, let him reserve that wife for his first son. Not me. I am married and I am married. There are there are agents of darkness in the world today who specializes in scattering homes. And there are so many. We have them even in holiness churches. Because they pretended as if they are holy. They are not holy. There are counselors that will never help you. When husbands and wives begin to live apart, it's a dangerous signal. You will be unfaithful. It will get to a level you become irresponsible because you are no longer together. You will not be taking responsibility over the wife and over the children. By the, by the knowledge of the Bible that I know as a pastor, husband and wife should stay together, live together, do everything together so that Satan will not come in into their union. The devil is after the Christian home. Now, listen to me. Without a good homes, there will never be a good church. Without a good church, there will never be a better society to live in. This is the day that, that the devil is so mad. He's so mad at Christian homes and he has been succeeding because there are so many agents of darkness who call themselves pastors, who call themselves ministers in various pulpits today and they are destroying homes and said, between now, between now and in three years' time, don't touch your wife. 
because of the height you want to get to. Which height do you want to go? It's not scriptural. As I was praying, the Lord told me that your wife wants to kill you. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. How come that it, is, it isn't the husband that wants to kill the wife? How is it that it is the wife who is wanting to kill the husband every now and then? Why is it that it is not the other way around? We must be careful. If you don't know the kind, the right church for you to go, the kind of a church to attend, they will help you scatter your home. They will help you scatter your joy. They will suspend your joy. They will command your laughter to travel into an unknown destination. It's already happening. There are some homes in my hands now that I'm handling in the wisdom of the Holy Ghost because of wicked pastors. Pastors as men, pastors as women. Evangelists as men, evangelists as women. Apostles as men, apostles and apostresses, if there is anything like that. They are scattering homes. So many women are in tears. So many women are in agony. So many women prefer to die. So many women are packed out from their matrimonial homes because of one useless pastor somewhere, because of one prophetess somewhere. They scatter homes and God is not happy. It will surprise you that marriage is older than the church herself. The first thing God did after the creation of man is to, inst is to institute marriage institution. God himself looked at a man and he said it wasn't good enough for a man to be alone. That's why the Bible says in the Old Testament language in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, woe unto him that is alone. Woe unto him that is alone. God has given you this wife and consider the way you have been living your lives together before you got to that church. And now that you are in that church, what impact has that church made in your union? What progress has that church made in your union? Your pastor is scattering your home and you are happy and you call him a minister of God. He's not a minister of God. That wicked woman is telling you that do not touch your wife. Run away from your husband. She's a wicked minister. He's a wicked minister. He's not of God. And I stand here this morning Declare it by the authority of the Bible and by the leading of the Holy Spirit, all the home scatterers in Lagos, in Ibadan, everywhere in the world, anybody under the disguise and the canopy of Christianity, of pulpit mannerism, under the disguise of prophecy, under the disguise of new revelation that are scattering home in the name that is above every other name, I retire them from the pulpit in the name of Jesus Christ. From this moment onward, I stand in the liberty of the gospel and I stand in the name of the Lord and within the confine of my calling as an apostle of the most high God, I decree in the name that is above every other name, everyone holding the microphone and scattering homes from this day onward, the Lord will hit them in Jesus name. And every home that has been scattered every home that has been disjointed, every home that are in shambles, every home that are in pain, every home that are in agony, every home that could no longer pick up the broken pieces of their family union together again because of how deep this wicked and satanically sent agent of the devil are and have gone into their homes in the name that is above every other name. The power of the resurrection, the power of the third day, the same spirit that quickens Jesus from the grave. I'm standing upon the word of God, decreeing and emphasizing that same power, that same grace, that same anointing is locating such families, regardless of their situations and their situated places, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord God Almighty, I beg of you this morning, because you are the author of life and you are the, you are the institutor of the marriage institution. 
Arise on behalf of the women that are in agony. Arise on behalf of the women that are in tears. Arise, oh God, on behalf of the women that are saying, but we never started like this. How come that my husband has left me and it is this man that is causing it and it is this woman that is causing it. Oh God, in your anger, arise and judge the case in the name of Jesus Christ. Can't finish this message. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. We're going to lift up two important prayer points before I leave this pulpit. We're going to have another extra 20 minutes to pray later for our joy, for our home and continuity in the fold. Lift up your two hands, everybody. If you are not going to pray very well, I'm going to send you out. You must pray very well. As I speak with you, a woman still called me not quite long and she told me, Sir. I'm leaving my husband. I don't want to have anything doing with that man again. You know what happened? A wicked woman preacher called her husband and said, don't touch this woman again. She's a witch and she's going to destroy your ministry. And that's why on Tuesday, I'll be talking on home breakers. In a Bible study, home breakers. Now, if any pastor anywhere tells you that you should not touch your wife, you should not touch your husband, that pastor is from the pit of hell. Why did you get married? What are you there for? What are you there for in that marriage? The real marriage is touching each other. That's the real marriage. It's not just standing together, eating together, discussing together. She has been doing that with her parents before she got married. You have been doing that with your siblings before you got married. Now that you are married, and one pastor, and please, please, stop going around. Stop going around. There are so many home breakers here and there today in our country. And they are thriving. They are making it. You know why? Nigerians are so vulnerable. Nigerians, they are so gullible. Everybody is looking for, God says the Lord. God said, as I was praying for you, I saw something. Lies from the pit of hell. You are seeing things in the life of others. You couldn't see anything in your own life. You are a deceiver. You are a deceiver. Don't form the habit of running here and there. And one prophet will pray for me. This and that will... No, 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 no. Let there be nobody intermediary between you and God. You can stand like this before God and pray and God will answer if truly you are born again. Lift up your two hands, everybody. And you are going to pray with me sincerely from your mind. Close your eyes. Nobody should open his eyes now. Close your eyes. We are going to pray. Say, Father. Father. I want to believe we are living congregation, isn't it? So loud and clear. Father. Father. Arise in your anger. And deal with every home breaker. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth and pray church. Arise O oh God. In your anger. And deal with every home breaker. All oh, the home breakers. Deal with them. Deal with them. Deal with them. I beseech you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Arise in your anger and deal with every home breaker. As a woman, as a man, as a bishop, as an apostle, as a pastor, as an evangelist, as an authority in the Christian fold, arise, O oh God, and Deal with every home breaker. Deal with every home breaker. Deal with every home breaker. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, we are going to pray. Hold on to somebody beside you. Hold on to somebody beside you. We are going to pray this prayer very seriously for at least two or three minutes. We're going to say, every broken home and homes at the verge of breakage. Did you understand that? 
I didn't say home at the verge of breaking. Homes at the verge of breakage. Amen. Broken homes and the homes at the verge of breakage. They are almost the same. They are almost the same. They are almost the same. We are going to pray the prayer very well. Very well. Repeat after me. Every broken home and homes are the verge of breakage. Lord, bring them back together. In the name of Jesus Christ. 